Hi, I'm Rebecca and welcome to episode 9 of the Career Bay Knitting Podcast. So hello and welcome, uh, my name is Rebecca, I am a crafter based in Edinburgh and this is a podcast or a vlog all about knitting, what I've been knitting on, what I'm currently knitting on and what I'd like to knit on in the not too distant future. Um, and yeah, it's episode nine. This is crazy. We're getting close to double digits. I still feel like I'm quite new to this podcasting thing, but um, yeah, nine episodes in, I'm a bit of an old hat now. I should have this down. Um, if you're a new viewer, hello and welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And... Yeah, what have I got today? I've got a lot. I've got, I always have a lot. I need to stop saying I have a lot because when do I not have a lot? I have one finished object. I have four works in progress. I have three questions from Asking Anything Thread. I've got three podcast recommendations. I've got a deadline for a knit along and some prizes coming up. And then just some life updates. That's what we've got going on. So um, let me jump in with what I'm wearing. So this is my Crescendo sweater. This is a test knit. It's a test knit for uh, Sophie Hemmings, who is the Knit Pearl Girl. And um, yeah, really, really enjoyed this pattern. I knit the fourth size um, of the sweater. It is a really, it's pretty simple. Um, I've worn this a lot, so sorry. There's a bit of wear and tear on it already. Um, it's a finished object last time, and since then I've blocked it. It is a, this really, really simple but like quite effective eh, lace yoke. Go a bit further. I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. I'll pop a finished object picture in, and you can see the whole thing. Um, yeah, it's got this like star kind of pattern, um, and this really nice chunky neckline, which I really enjoy. Um, what I really, really like about this, I mentioned this last time, and it's a weird thing, but I think this is a really flattering shoulder shape. <laughs> I don't think I've ever, I mean I've never been complimented on my shoulders. I don't think I've ever considered how my shoulders look on something. But I just I just think this the yoke fits so nicely. Um yeah, I definitely at some point in the future would like to try knitting this again without the lace. Because I just really love the fit of the jumper. I think it's really it's really good. Um I you though the pattern is not out yet, however, today, which is Friday the 28th of January. I believe that the, the blouse version of this is being released, which is a DK weight version. And it has like more of this design because obviously there's more fabric here. So it's like, um, I think there's like three tiers of, of lace. Um, and I think it's knit with a strand of finger and a strand of mohair. Um, so that's out today, I believe. And in this one, the test deadline for this is the 11th of February because I think the pattern is due for release on the 12th of February. So like two weeks away. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun knitting it and I've submitted all my notes. I think I just need to do a Ravelry page on it, but otherwise it's all done. Um, the yarn for this is West Yorkshire Spinners Retreat, which is an unspun roving in like the natural or like cream colourway. This yarn is the reason I signed up for the test knit because I had this in stash and didn't know what to knit with it. And saw this and thought, oh, it's a recommended yarn. I should do that. And yeah, I didn't love knitting with this yarn, if I'm honest. I found it a bit... I just don't really find it very inspiring to knit with. Like sometimes you're knitting, you're like, oh, this is so good. This wasn't like that. Um, but I have to say, what I really enjoy about this is like, this is a perfect temperature garment. My sweater number nine is also a bulky weight. And I just find it too warm. Like there's a high neck, I can wear it outside, but I never wear it in, at home because I'm too warm in it. But for this, like I quite often wear this to work from home because like the, like with my joggers on, <laughs> like my leggings, because <laughs> I'm on a call, like looking really professional. <laughs> um, so I've worn it a few times working from home, and uh, yeah, it's a really like, just, yeah, it fits my wardrobe really well. The yarn, now, yeah, you can see a little bit under here, it is pilling, but it's an unspun roving, so I, I guess I expected that, like it's not a massive surprise. Um, yeah, and yeah, you can see like, I've worn this maybe four times and the sleeves are already looking a little bit like rumply rumples, but sweaters are made to be worn. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this, super comfy, um, takes a lot of boxes and I really, really like the fit of this jumper, especially. 
Um, oh, that was the other thing. The yarn grew a lot. <laughs> so it grew... I found that I, I washed and bought my swatch, but I found that it was much heavier, like as a whole garment. And so once I washed it and laid it down, I had to like smoosh it back together because I was getting big gaps between my stitches or when it was wet. So I was like smooshing it back in and trying to like... Yeah, I don't know, I was trying to really smoosh, I don't really know what else to say, like lay the stitches back in tightly toward each other because otherwise they could have really easily spread out a lot. And the result of that is it's quite a bit longer, I think it's grown by like seven or eight centimetres, um, which I didn't expect. So I cropped the jumper and now it's just a regular length jumper, so that's not a disaster. But I passed it on to Sophie and I think um, she's going to recommend that, like just going to add that line in the pattern if you use this yarn. Do that. It is 14 stitches per 10 centimeter gauge, which I also can get that gauge with a strand of drops here and a strand of well, a drops here and a mohair, and um, which is definitely what I would if I was to make this again. Oh, maybe I make a black version of that. That could be something. Anyway, yeah, that is what I'm wearing. <laughs> so let me jump straight into my first FO. Um. And this has not been blocked but it has been worn <laughs> so take from that what you will so this is my badger and balloon sweater um i will uh i'll show you here and then i'll put the finished object picture on the screen as i'm talking about it it is a top down color work design it has this really interesting like one by one color work that turns into quite like a dramatic contrast and it also has some on the sleeves and it has a little bit on the hem which is it does need blocks as the ribbing's rolling up um, so yeah, I really, really like this sweater. Uh, my boyfriend thinks this is one of my best sweaters I've knit, which we all know, like if you've got a partner or like a friend who doesn't knit and they compliment one of your knitted garments, like you know that you've hit the jackpot with it. So yeah, I'll pop a finish, I've got a picture, so I'll pop a finished object picture on the screen. Um, and this is pre-blocking and I didn't think it needed blocks until I took this picture and I thought, mm, I should block this because it's a bit uneven. Um, that being said, the colour work, like, I have knit two colourwork sweaters, so this is my third, and that colourwork, like, it's so even, and that's not me, that's the yarn. <laughs> so, and the fact that it's one by one colourwork. So, yeah, what else? The pattern, um, I'll come back to that. The yarn, uh, the yarn is Holstgarn Silo, I think I'm mispronouncing this, it's, um, the Spanish word for sky. Somebody let me know in the last in the comments of the last episode. Um, I don't like my brain went to silo, but I could be mispronouncing this word. Um, but I will pop it down below. It is great. It's amazing. I bought some in the Black Friday sale, and I really, really, really enjoyed working with it. I bought six skeins of the natural and three of the grey, and I have about two thirds left of a skein of each colour. Um, so I definitely needed all six. Sorry, all nine skeins. Um, really good price point. This is normally priced at £5.40 a ball and I got it I think for £4.30 so it was really really inexpensive. My whole sweater came out to like, I don't know what that is, about, 30, about £40 I think, um, or like £39-ish um, for a, an amazing sweater and this yarn is so good. Now I've not blocked it and I've not, like it's been worn but not excessively so I might have to report back on how that goes. It is really stretchy which I really loved. Um, so yeah, really really love this. It definitely does need blocked. The ribbing is just starting to flip up a little bit. Um, and the sleeves are a bit too short. Uh, they just, like, I like a bracelet length and they're sitting like here maybe. So I'll just stretch them out a little bit when I wash them. Um, and yeah, really really love this FO. Um, but a few comments to make on the pattern. Uh, so, two things about the pattern. Firstly, is I skipped the short rows and I should not have done that. Um, I think maybe there were some revisions done to the pattern in testing, or it might just be that in the small, the yoke is the same depth for all sizes, and so maybe the yoke fits better on larger sizes, or, I mean, uh, yeah, like, as opposed to the small, like, the smaller, extra small. Because when I saw the pattern pictures, the designer, like, the yoke was coming down to, like, mid-arm, um, so probably, like, two inches deeper than I wanted and so I was quite stressed about this whilst I was knitting this jump jumper because I did not want like a really just don't want deep yoke like I just don't think it flatters many people. So I skipped in the short rows 
and in actual fact the yoke fits perfectly like it's perfect I just basically finished the color work and immediately split for sleeves um, and it does like I find that the front sits a little bit too high on my neck like I feel like it's like this so I will see what I can do with blocking I think blocking will fix it but yeah there's the only thing I would have changed with with knitting this is I probably would have um, done the short rows because I do think I could do with the back being a bit more raised because currently it's just the exact same fit on the front and back <laughs> which is fine. Um, the other thing about the pattern is I mentioned in the last podcast this designer is not size inclusive and this pattern goes up to a finished bust measurement of 115 centimeters which I don't think is acceptable in today's uh, climate. I don't know. I just don't think it's okay to make such limited size patterns. Um, and I said that I won't be just buying from the designer again. Um, I had emailed the designer before that podcast and I heard back from her after I filmed it. She has no intention of increasing the size range. Um, the I'm definitely paraphrasing here but she doesn't believe that um, like a 3XL and a small will fit together in the same pattern. Um, so yeah, no intentions to change sizing on this. Um, but I was I was really nervous when I filmed the last episode and then I uploaded it and it was ready. Like it takes so long to upload. So I think it was like an hour buffering out of my laptop, like out of my editing software and then like two hours upload and then it does all the screens and I was sitting there and I was like, oh, should I post this? Like, should I go back and take that bit out? Cause yeah, I was really nervous about it. Um, and then I was like, how do I want to take this forward? And so what I've decided I'm going to do is I don't want to be I don't want this to be like a negative thing that I'm, I don't want to be constantly calling people out for um, for like not designing inclusive patterns because I don't think that's positive or the way to do things. So what I do want to do is when I'm talking about sweaters I'm knitting or patterns I'm choosing, I want to talk about the um, size that I'm, the size that I'm knitting and the ease that that will give me and then talk about the size range of the pattern. Um, just so I can be positive, hopefully shed a light on some designers that are designing for like a full size range, like 9 or 10 sizes, um, and also um, keep myself accountable because it would be really easy for me to just rant on about this and then to like knit another pattern in a size, like a not inclusive, uh, put in, uh, knit another garment in a not inclusive pattern, but this way if I share it every time, I keep myself accountable. So that is my uh, my manifesto on size inclusivity on this podcast. Um, but when I wear this, I will say, like I wore, I finished it and I wore it out exactly the same day. We went for like a walk, I went to get brunch and I felt like so Scandi chic. Like I just felt really cool. I was wearing my jeans, and, like a long black coat and some boots and this. And I just was like, I am the bee's knees. Um, so yeah, I really, really love this pattern. And I will say, I don't think it should be this way, but if you are desperate to make this and it doesn't come in your size, you could hack it, like you really, really could hack it. For the most part, the colour work is done on a, it's just a two stitch repeat, like it's a two stitch chart. Um, so you could really, really easily increment like this to be, to fit your bust if um, the 115 centimetres doesn't fit you. And you, yeah, if you want to. So that is my first FO. Uh, and I have four whips so let me get started on my whips and um, it's a very like beige palette on my floor right now so clearly I've got like neutrals neutrals everywhere Um, yeah let's jump into the first one okay so uh, my first whip um, it's funny because I filmed this I tried to film on Wednesday today's Friday I tried to film on Wednesday Um, I got all set up I mean set up I moved a table and turned my lap turned my camera on <laughs> um, uh, but work was just really busy. I said a few episodes ago I've taken on a new role and it's just a lot busier um, and in the past well, what I usually do on the days I record is that I take um, a bit of a longer lunch and then either work later or finish, start earlier um, but this um, this week I've been taking like 15-20 minute lunches or like yesterday I had lunch on a call because it was so busy so uh, when I filmed, tried to film on Wednesday this was missing still a whole sleeve and today it's like five rows from being done which is kind of weird uh, but quite cool so this is the sweater number 11 by my favorite things knitwear it's gonna be a bit tricky to hold up um i have a work in progress picture that i can share um so it is a real simple real straightforward um like a drop shoulder twisted rib sweater there are 
50 of these no there are at least three or four patterns that are the same pattern pretty much it's got um some details i really like it has this really long twisted rib uh collar which is just beautiful it has a really interesting design for the increases mine is a little bit um puckered but a block out um the way you in is that gonna pick up the way you increase gives this really interesting like ridge which i just think is a really nice design detail and yeah um it has like slightly it's caught maybe i think it's like 20 rounds of rubbing on the cuff or i've done a slightly longer cuff and it's all italian bind off because she's a fancy lady um so Firstly, the pattern. Pattern is by my favourite things knitwear. This pattern comes in three sizes, which is a bit weird. The smallest size is 126 centimetres finished, and the largest is 148 centimetres. I'm making the smallest size. Uh, I have a 100 centimetre bust, so that will give me 26 centimetres of positive ease, which is a lot of positive ease in my opinion. Um, but we're rolling with it. Somebody wore this sweater to one of our knit nights, our virtual knit nights. Her name's Chloe. She made one in like almost this colour, like a real cream, and it was stunning. And since then I've wanted to make it. Um, somebody, uh, so yeah, if you wanted a more inclusive pattern, um, there is Petite Knit. Petite Knit's Wednesday sweater is very similar. I think it has a split hem, so instead of doing a split hem, you could just do not split hem. But I'm pretty sure it's the same, it's like an oversized, like this, it's the same construction with this drop shoulder, it's a funnel neck. Or like a turtleneck and it's all twisted rib and that one comes in 110 centimeters finished or 175 centimeters finished so it's much more inclusive um but yeah so uh, i'm really enjoying this there are a couple of things about it um about the pattern so somebody asked how i choose ease for sweaters and i have no idea like i don't really know i'm still working it out I think the very best tip is to measure something that you really enjoy the fit of and get to there. And I think from moving forward, this sweater um, was meant to have 105 centimetres ease and it stretched out to 108. Well, sorry. It's meant to have 5 centimetres ease, so it's meant to be 105 centimetres finished. Um, this is 108 and I find this probably pretty good. Like, I quite like the fit of this jumper. So in my brain now, 108 is a pretty good place to go, or like between 105 and 110. Um, for like an everyday fit, like a classic fit, um, and I think yeah, five centimeters ease, five to eight is probably good for me. But yeah, measure. I'm making a sweater for my stepdad. Um, I'm gonna get the yarn today. If he's at my parents' house, and we're going to my parents this weekend. Um, and my recommendation for him will be to measure. I'm gonna measure one of the sweaters that he really likes, and I'm gonna knit to those measurements. So if you're not sure how to pick ease. That is my recommendation. Um, just pick things you like the fit of. So this is a much more easy. It's 26 centimetres. Um, a couple of things I don't, I don't dislike, but I don't love. I feel like the ribbing is very, like, do you see this almost puckering here? Um, I think this will stretch out, but it's quite like a dramatic, and it makes sense when it's such a big waist, like big chunk of ribbing, but I find it's quite a dramatic like cinch with the rib. So I'm really gonna pin the rib out to be like a straight, straight rib. That's the first thing. The second thing is I find the sleeves to be quite short. I actually knit the second ribbing longer because the sleeve was so short. Again, let's see how it blocks. Um, the sleeve is sort of meant to start here and so you don't knit very much sleeve because the start of the sleeve, instead of like, yeah, instead of it just being here, it starts probably a bit further, maybe a few centimeters lower. Oh, I've just spotted a, a mohair loop that I've missed. But you hate that. Can you even see it? No, can't even see it. It's not a big deal. <laughs> so yeah, that's some things um, about it. I added, yeah, so I, I finished, I got to where the ribbing told me to knit to, and I tried the sleeves on and I found them to be like a bit here. And I was like, oh, okay, he's a little bit short for my liking. Um, especially because it's like a big oversized jumper. And the pattern does say, if you want more of an oversized feel, um, add some extra ribbing. So I've done that. So I think my ribbing is maybe 10 to 12 centimeters as opposed to I think the eight that's recommended in the pattern. Um, bind off, tubular, I don't know if it's tubular or Italian, it's a sewn bind off but they're all on the same needle. I think tubular is when you have two needles and you almost kitchener them together, this is not that. Um, I thought I'd done this wrong if I'm being honest and then I went back and looked at the pattern and realized I'd done it right, I just don't know if I like the look of it. 
So this is my Italian bind off, um, or my, I think it's Italian. If I'm wrong, someone tell me. The thing with this though is you do set up rows. So you do like a row where you knit the knits and slip the pearls, and then you do a row where you slip, knit the pearls and slip the knits. And it makes it a little bit puffier and I just think it's a bit messy. So on the sleeve, I just did straight, like no setup rows and I definitely prefer that. So in future, I love a sewn bind off I think now. I think it's really beautiful and I'm willing to take the time to do it. But I don't think I'll be doing setup rows because I don't think they add much to the finished garment. Somebody's gonna tell me why I'm wrong, I'm sure. But that's okay. <laughs> so the, mm. <clears throat> so, uh, so the yarn I'm using for this, I'm holding two strands together. Um, I am using Cascade 220 in the Colourway River Rock. I bought this yarn as a backup for the Billy sweater, that uh, my cabled sweater that I've received so much love, um, and I'm still too scared to wear. <laughs> uh, but I wasn't sure about the colour when I first ordered that yarn. I thought it might be too dark, so I ordered this as a backup. Um, but when it arrived, I had already decided on the green, but I was a bit um, unsure about whether, like I, I knew I liked this colour, so I thought I'd keep this one. And I'm holding that with a strand of Filcolana Tilia in the colourway Latte. Um, and it's a beautiful, like the fabric, it's it's a real luxurious fabric it's come up with. Um, it's like a, there's a, you can see a little halo from it, and I think it'll be really nice and neutral. Um, so yeah nothing bad to say about these. I will have quite a bit left. So I am literally, um, I think I have like five more rounds of ribbing to do on the second sleeve and then bind off. And I probably have still half a skein of this, each of these, and a full skein still of mohair and a full skein still of Cascade. Which, I don't know, I don't love having that much left, like it just annoys me when there's so much leftover yarn from a project. So we'll see. What I might do is, I've seen a few vests or like slipover patterns I quite like and so maybe I'll order an extra one of each and just make them into a vest because it's quite a lot of leftovers. Um, but yeah, nothing urgent yet and if I were to make this again I could quite comfortably make it with five skeins of each yarn instead of six. You have six of each. Um, and the other thing is this sweater might be too short for me. I'm gonna block it and see what I think. Um, but I might, like, because it's this big oversized sweater, it feels weird to have it quite cropped or quite short. So we'll see, I'll block it out and try it on. Um, and then maybe, who am I kidding? I'm not gonna rip this back. Like in my head I'm saying, I could rip this back and I could add an extra like five centimeters, but I'm not, on, I'm, I'm as a, if I do that as a cut off the tubular binding, which, or the Italian bind off, so. Unless it's really unwearable, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Who am I kidding? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so this, um, I, did I mention, I mentioned that we're going to my parents this weekend? Yeah, I did mention that. Um, we're going to my parents this weekend and so my goal hopefully is to um, finish the sleeve so that I can block it over the weekend while there's no one in the house. Um, so that it'll be nice and wearable. I actually really want to wear it this weekend but I don't, I think it's going to be blocked. We'll see. I'll finish it today and try it on. <laughs> um, I just know like a couple of outfits in my wardrobe that I really want to wear this with, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, so yeah, this is my sweater number 11. I said last time that the episode I film when I wear this, I'll have to sit on a different couch <laughs> because it matches my chair so much. Um, and big props, uh, someone left a comment and said, just put a quilt over it or something. And I agree, like that might just be the answer because <laughs> Yeah, I will be matching my sofa when I wear this one. So yeah, that is my first whip. Um, three more, as per usual. So, the next whip is an old one that's been taken back, back out of hibernation. So, um, back in like, I know when it was actually, I cast this on, uh, we went to, I went, uh, we went away to Whitby the Halloween weekend and I remember because um, I wanted to take my Billy sweater and a shawl with me um, and I ended up not taking either because the yarn didn't arrive and so this is what I cast on but then I had the Billy sweater, I had a shawl which is a gift net to make I had so much going on that this got put to the sidelines for a while with every intention of picking it back up but just no urgency to do so 
And then two weeks ago, we were going to the cinema and I didn't have like a suitable cinema knitting project. So I knit this very quickly. <laughs> well, I got it to a stage very quickly where I could take it to the cinema. So this is uh, the Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit. Um, and yeah, it's not, there's not a whole much to show. So I had knit the back panel and I'd knit most of the front, but I had to still knit a bit more of the front to join the armholes. And then I took it to the cinema just after it was joining the round. And so I've not made a whole lot of progress. A couple of inches progress in the body. So let's start with this. this. So it's like, a, it's like, again, it's very similar to the sweater number 11 in the same construction. So it's like, you do this top back of the yoke and then you do the two front sections. And it's got a very like rounded sleeve cap. Um, it's got a chunky, like a chunkier folded neck on this as well. There are two, there's the Oslo and there's the Stockholm sweater and as far as I can tell they're the same pattern. <laughs> one is in mohair and one is in not mohair and they have slightly different ease recommendations but I'm still yet to discover the differences. So this, um, I'm looking the third size which is a finished bust measurement of 110 centimetres and this goes up to 166 finished bust measurement, which I think is a, goes from extra small to an 5XL. Um, this is on 3.5 mil needle, sorry, 3.75 mil needles. So, oh, I see that as I pull my needle out. So it's quite slow working, like it's slow progress, um, hence why it's just not going very quickly. But as my sweater number 11 is finished, this will become my primary, like, easy project so if I'm at work and I'm on meetings or if I are watching a movie with the cinema etc this will take the position of being like that knitter that sweater I usually I'm digressing here a lot sorry I'm losing my train of thought I usually have like I used to always have one complicated and one easy pattern on the go at a time and I seem to have fallen into a place where I have two and two which is fine and um, I don't think I'll cast on another I think I'll focus on this one for now We'll see. I've done so much swatching recently that honestly, who knows what will happen. Um, so yeah, it's this really lovely colour. So it's showing up quite red here, which I actually really like. It's, it's redder than, it's not like an orangey, it's a real warm red. But these are the yarns I'm using. So I, this fabric is beautiful, it's so soft. So this is the reason it's so soft. This is Drops Alpaca. Oh, I have a bar here. I was gonna say, I'm not sure, in Alpaca, is it Lima? No, it is Alpaca. This one is covered in floor fluff. Um, Drops Alpaca. Oh, it's a real squished up skein. Um, and this is in the colourway Rust Mix, which, um, oh, can I capture it? Not quite. So there are, the overall colour is a red, but in the, like, spun, in the fibre, are blues and yellows. And so it gives it almost like a, almost like a holographic feel, like it's, that's what strange to say. Um, really beautiful. And I'm holding that with Tilia. No, I'm holding that with Sadness Garn Tin in the colour Rust. Um, I realise this, I just ordered some more of this in a different colour for a different project. Um, I broke my yarn band, by the way. If anyone was following, I was trying not to buy yarn until the end of February. I will get into later why I'm definitely not meeting that requirement, but um, I justified it by telling myself that it was mohair to pair with something in my stash. So does it count? I don't know. I don't know. But what I did notice, in my head this is a very very soft mohair. And actually it's not a very soft mohair. It is 57% mohair, 28% silk and 15% wool. Now the fibre, the, like the fabric sorry, that's been knitted up is so soft because of the alpaca. This alpaca is, because this is 60% alpaca. No, I can't see it. Oh, 100% alpaca. Great. So it drops alpaca. It's 100% alpaca. So it's super, super soft. But yeah, I just don't think the til I don't think the tilia is very soft. I ordered this and I found that the drops air actually is much, much softer. And the Filcolana. Um, I'm just trying. I've been trying, by the way, over the past few months to try some different mohairs so that I have a point of comparison because I just can't find this yarn. There we go. <laughs> So this is the Filcolana Tilia, and then this is the um, Sadness Garn Tin, and I actually have some drops here. 
and this is drops this is some drops air um and i was interested because obviously the price point varies massively this is like three pounds a skein this is like eight pounds a skein and this is like in the middle somewhere um and i kind of wanted to try these to be able to justify buying these if that makes sense i'm not sure um of the sourcing of these so if this if these are more environmentally friendly then i would be willing to pay a higher price for them but purely on content like this super soft beautiful don't I actually think this is rougher anyway digressing yet again this is yeah this is my stockholm so yeah it's beautiful i love the yarn i love the pattern i have a sweater's quantity of a dk weight yarn I do. And I think I want to make this sweater, but I want to finish it first and then check the fit and decide if I want to make the same size. So that's my main motivation. I want this finished object, of course, but I want it because it's like unlocking another stash project for me. So yeah, part of me was like, oh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not putting much time into this, but I think I should. I'll take this with me this weekend, I think. Um, so yeah, it's going to be real nice. It's going to fit my wardrobe really well. It feels like luxury, super soft. So yeah, that is my Stockholm sweater. Two down, two to go. <laughs> okay, so I don't really know the flow to do the next few whips because they're the same but different. <laughs> so I'm trying to knit from stash until the end of February. And the goal was to not buy any new yarn, which I've already kind of broke because I have yarn, but it's to go with yarn I have in stash. So I've been doing a lot of thinking about like projects. I'm obsessed with DK projects. I've got quite a lot of DK weight yarn or I've got quite a lot of yarn that I want to hold double to make DK weight projects. And then I thought about some of the yarns that some of the patterns I've made before and how I really want to remake some of them. So let me start about the pa let me start with the one I made the first time. This pattern is called the Freidag, 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 I don't really know. Um, it is a Norwegian designer and I thought this translated to Friday but Caroline of Caroline's Knits informed me that it is free day or like day off. So it's basically the day off cardigan. It is um, a pattern by Afton Strick and she has some amazing patterns, really enjoy them. Um, which we'll get into because you're going to see that I've got more than one. <laughs> but this is the one that I made in the summer. Um, so I, it is... Uh, like a cable knit, this is pretty much one of my first, well not quite, my second cable knit design I reckon, that I, or pattern that I followed. It has this really like, uh, there's that, it's quite easy to see. So it has these three, um, I can have a picture in, I'll have a picture in and talk about it. It has these three, like a big, a middle and a small cable that sort of come down either side here. And then the sleeves and the middle panel are done in double moss stitch. And I made this in the summer and I, like this felt like a real level up for me in my knitting um, and that was really great. I really enjoyed that. Um, I wore it a lot over the summer uh, although it was definitely too warm for that. Like <laughs> I was wearing it when I shouldn't have worn it. Like I was definitely too warm but I wasn't wearing the cardigan so much <laughs> that I was like dying of overheat <laughs> which is ridiculous. Um, I made this in Drops Lima which is like a f I think it's 60% wool, 60% alpaca, 40% wool base in like the cream colour, it is super soft um, and it's not done for getting quite a lot of wear, it's in pretty good shape there's not a whole lot, there are a couple of tiny little pills but I wouldn't probably, get, only on the cables really, like all the moss stitch is not really pills at all and some of the bigger cables are a little bit of pilling um, it's got a really nice drape to it, all in all, love this pattern um, there are some rookie errors, so you seam up the shoulders and as you can see <laughs> my seeming was not very good um, and there are also just some really obvious places where I've made a mistake there's somewhere I shouldn't be finding oh yeah here like I have at some point here just changed from one knit stitch to two knit stitches for no reason so yeah I definitely wanted to remake this because I love the pattern I actually didn't like I wanted to make this with a strand of mohair and a strand of the. I saw one that was like rose pink and that was in my mind for a while but of course that's not what I cast on because who does that <laughs> so this is my first version I made in summer so I cast on one recently it wasn't really a conscious decision it was more just like that's what I could knit and actually I'm really liking it 
So I'm making this version now. I'll hold it up. Um, it's obviously huge because it's knit flat. Um, so I'll hold it up like folded. So I'm making a version in this colourway. Um, so, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's blowing out a little bit. Um, it's really autumnal. So I'm knitting this in Wooly Knit. So I have quite a few hanks. I went a bit mad in their Black Friday sale and I also had some from their Halloween sale. <laughs> the if you're new here, I'm a big fan of Wooly Knit. If you're a returning viewer, you'll not be surprised. And sneak a uh, bit of information, next video, there's gonna be something very exciting coming with Wooly Knit. Um, but before then, I have to get through quite a lot of stash that I already have with Wooly Knit. So this is the cinnamon colorway. 100% um, British wool and I, I think this might be one of my favourite colours they do. There's this and one other colour called Harvest. I just love it so much. Um, it's really interesting because there are some, maybe you can see it here, some parts of it have this like neon yellow almost through it and it gives it a really interesting depth of colour. So I wound up, I think I've got, I've got enough to make two garments out of this because I love the colour so much which is unnecessary. Like the colour is not going anywhere. I could have waited but I didn't. <laughs> So I have a lot of this, um, and so I wound up the 200 gram hank into smaller balls. Like I have, I think these are 200 gram balls, and I'm pulling from the centre, and I'm holding it double stranded, and I was bang on gauge. And I think it's a really nice, interesting, like I think it's a really good yarn combo. It's definitely more rustic. Um, this, similar to like your Holst garn, or like Jameson's, or Jameson and Smith, or Jameson's, it's quite rough to knit with but it softens up a lot with wash um, and I'll talk about it more next time because I've been doing some swatching holding it with other, other strands of things and it's been super interesting but for this like firstly it's a cardigan so I'm never going to wear it next to skin but I do have a jumper with two strands of this and it is completely fine next to skin um, and yeah so that is the yarn let me talk about the pattern sorry if this is really bitty like in chunks. My camera keeps overheating and then I keep getting coughing fits mostly because I keep snacking while my camera my camera cools down. I go get a snack. I keep eating croutons from the bag and then sitting down to film and then I get a crouton cramp stuck in my throat and coughing. This has happened like three times now so I'm sorry if it's very like cut up. <laughs> and it's all real talk here. So yeah this um I just really like this. I think this colour is going to suit me really nicely. Um I I'm ready for this finished garment. I, I don't love the purling rose to be honest. Like I, I don't, um, I could have, I definitely could have steeped this but I just didn't think to if I'm honest. Um, and it's fine, like I don't dislike them but I'm just not reaching for the project straight away. I took this to knit night on Monday. I think it's gonna be my knit night project for a while because knit night is like three hours long and it gets three hours of love on it whilst I'm chatting to everyone and that for me is like a pretty perfect, uh, pretty perfect situation. In all honesty, I cast this on because I got a new project bag and I wanted something in the project bag. Which is, you know, that's logical. So I had this one before. This one's holding my Stockholm sweater. Um, it's like a really great like two or three skein project or like a DK weight sweater or like, a, yeah, like a lighter weight sweater. It fits really well into here. Um, it's, yeah, the brand is called Tea Cake Make. They're on Etsy. They do like needle covers and stuff as well. And I got this one because I needed project bags and I was scrolling Etsy. And then I was really impressed with it. Like it has like softened up really nicely. Like it feels worn in a nice way. I think it's like a canvas fabric. And then I followed her on Instagram and then she posted about this one, which is my new one. And I was like, I have to get that. Mostly because I wasn't buying yarn and I was like feeling sad that I wasn't getting deliveries of fun things. Um, and it's a bit more like springtime and it's been really good because if I can show this well, let me roll it up a little bit. I basically have like the two skein, yeah you can't see this, I have the two skeins, um, the two like cakes, they fit perfectly side by side and then I'm pulling from the middle. So this has almost been like a bucket, like I just sit it down like this and then I just and that's been a lot of fun. So this is my Friday, Friday cardigan. Um, I think it's gonna be on the news for a little while, but I'm okay with that. No big rush. Um, it's cropped, so to be honest, like it's not that far. It has to be, I think it's 26 centimeters to here, and then it's just like a couple panels, and then it's just the, sle the sleeves and picking up the, yeah, it's not that much. 
I would say, I forgot to mention this, on the one I made, the alpaca one that I made in summer, I took five centimetres off the body, which I should not have done, so this one will not get that, and the sleeves are too short. However, I blocked the whole thing before I did the sleeves so I could block at the cables, and I've not blocked it since I finished the sleeves, so I should, at some point, maybe I'll do that today, like over this weekend, I really want to block the sleeves, and again, they just sit like here, and I just find that a bit annoying, so I just want to block the sleeves out, which I think, in my head I thought, alpaca would stretch out so I left them a bit shorter but that was not a thing that didn't happen so I must be a bit bouncy so I'll block um and to block the sleeves on that so it just means that for this um I will yeah for this one I'll I'll take those into consideration and probably make it a bit longer and make the sleeves a bit longer I also got a question so I got a lot of questions in the Q&A and I'm trying to slot some of them in that are just like little questions. Um, somebody asked me do I make patterns more than once? I make a lot of patterns more than once. I don't know what this is like. I do quite a lot of sewing and I did a lot more sewing before I did knitting and in sewing like you pretty much always make a test garment um, called a, a toile or a muslin where you, you make it and you check the fit and then you make the one in like your nice fancy fabric or like yeah, or if you're going to make future ones, you make it that. So I, that's what I do a lot in sewing. And in sewing, I have a lot of patterns that I've made like five plus times because I just love the fit. Like I've nailed the fit, I've done all the editing, I've got the pattern to where I want it to be. And so I can just churn that pa pattern out in fabrics I love. And I think I brought that mindset a little bit into my knitting where I like to make a first one, um, which I know will still be wearable. And I also know I can go back and fix it, right? Like if something doesn't fit, I can always take the yarn out. So it's not like cutting into fabric. But I like to make a first one and then often I'm drawn back to make the same pattern with the fit makes I want to, that I like, especially for the more simple ones. So my no frills I've made twice, um, the Stockholm sweater I'm making this one with the intention of making a second one, this cardigan I've made twice, and Maya I've made twice and I've not, like I've been garment knitting for a year. So yeah, bang on a year because I finished pretty much my first real garment in time for Unravel last year which is coming up again. So yeah, I make a lot of things twice um, and I think it's because I like being able to adjust the fit for the second one. Talking of making something twice, my last whip is going to be a little bit of deja vu. Okay, so my last whip, I cast on after the cardigan, but very much inspired by the cardigan. Um, and this pattern, like this whole concept was in my queue for a while. And then I cast it on last summer in the heat, like the peak of summer heat, which was a terrible idea. Hated it put it down, didn't come back to it. Um, but then starting the cardigan, I was like, oh, remember that idea you had? I got back to it. So the same designer has the cardigan, has like a V-neck slipover and has a sweater. So I cast on the sweater as well. <laughs> You'd think after the Billy sweater with all the cables, I'd be done with cables, but I think cable's my thing. At least right now, I'm in a cable moment. So some like color work knitters, got lace knitters. I have a cable knitter for the time being. Is that the front? I'm trying to see how I can best hold this up. There we go. So this is the Friday sweater. Sorry, not Friday. Free day, day off sweater. It's called the Frei Frida Genzer. And it's super similar in that it's got the double moss stitch. It's got the three cables. So like the big one, the medium one, the small one. Um, I will put a picture of the, like, the design here. And yeah, it, it's really lovely. I've had it in my mind for a while to make this one. I don't want to make it with the full roll neck. I'm going to make like a, like a this kind of, like a lower neck version. And yeah. So pattern, great. Knits up really quickly. I have to do, it's interesting because for a while the cardigan and this were like at the same place. But this one is on five millimetres. That one's on four. And that one I had to knit. 26 centimetres and this one I had to fit 39 so they were kind of like percentage wise creeping up at the same pace but this one's definitely shot ahead in the past few days. So this, um, I did the swatch for this and I made a note on my Ravelry of my swatch for this and then I cast on and the swatch was in needles a size bigger like I seem to think I needed to go up a size. I don't know why because I definitely didn't need to go up a size and I'm quite a loose knitter so actually I think I've had to go down maybe a half size from the pattern, but I of course cast it on and I was like, this looks too big, this looks too big and I got quite far and realised, yep, yeah, it's definitely too big. Um, so I am making the fourth size, um, 
which is going to be 108 centimeters finish, which is kind of similar to this. Um, I feel like my gauge was a little bit bigger, so I think it might finish around 110, but the size up for this is 118, and I felt that was too big. Um, this goes up to a finished size of 158 centimeters. That's the the range, and I'm knitting this in some unspun plotty lobby. So this is, um, I think you've probably seen this, I don't know, this was popular a while ago on other podcasters, I was definitely influenced into buying it. It is Unspun Yarn um, by Istex who make a lot of yarns including Let Lopey and Alafas Lopey and Plotty Lopey and I think probably a few others. Um, they come in these plates of, these like 100 gram plates which are 300 metres each and can I do that fun trick that all the podcasters do? It uh, it breaks really easily. I want to find the end, I'm not knitting wrong because I don't really want to break the end I'm working on. Um, because it's unspun, did I find the end? Am I making a mess? I'm making a mess. There we go. So because it's unspun, um, it's a really, like, it just, whoo, like magic. However, um, when you're up close with it, like, it's actually really, like, if it's got quite long staple lengths and so if you pull, like, the staples themselves are quite strong, but if you're pulling them apart because it's not spun, like, it just comes apart. Um, when you're knitting with this, if it comes apart, you just layer them back together. You don't even have to split splice them, you just layer them back and you just give them a little whoosh, 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 whoosh. And like magic, it is one strand again. Um, so this, yeah, it's really interesting yarn. It is, I definitely bought this because it was so well priced. I think it's six pounds a plate and a plate is 300 meters. Um, however, I'm holding two strands together. You can hold it single, single stranded, but I think it's quite, um, it's a very airy fabric, but I also think it's not a very hard wearing fabric. Um, I think what would be interesting is like a strand of this and a strand of mohair for the strength. Um, but yeah, I'm holding two strands together. So basically I'm getting like 150 meters per, per, per plate. Um, when I knit this before, so I, I tried it on the summer and this is just, it's super, super rustic. It smells real sheepy. Like this, this is definitely the sheepiest smelling yarn I've ever smelled. It's a weird thing to say about yarn, I guess, but um, when I did this before, I was pulling, I found it was breaking a lot and it was frustrating me and then it was all sticky and hot and it was just, it was not a good combo. And I was pulling one strand from the inside and one strand from the outside. And what I've done this time is I'm pulling both from the outside. And what I tend to do is like, I pull myself out like a couple of meters at a time and just place them next to me and then I knit like a row and then I pull some loose again. So there's never any big tension on it. Once it's knit up, it's like a really, like nothing's tearing this. It's a really strong fabric and um, because somebody explained this to me really well, but ultimately the knit, the, not explain this to me, somebody explained this in a podcast that I watched. <laughs> Who do I think I am? Somebody explained this to me, they did not. <laughs> um, the loop, because of like the loop of your stitch is so short and the staple lengths are so short, the stitches themselves are really tight um, and really like, they're really strong. But, so it's not going to just like fall apart because this, this, the loops of the, of the knit stitches and the staple end like grip properly. That's terrible science, but something like that. It made sense in my brain. So yeah, this is it. Um, I'm ho So yeah, I pull one from the inside, one from the outside. I've made quite good progress on this. I'm about 30-ish, 32, 33 centimetres, so I need to knit a bit more and then I'll split for the front and back and cast off under the arm, up to the shoulders, and then the sleeves are done in double moss stitch. It's real rustic, like I'm not wearing this next to skin. But in my head, this is like the oversized cable knit sweater that's really, really scratchy that you wear like to the beach on like a cold winter day or like hiking, you work camping, like that is the aesthetic I'm going for. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm enjoying it. Like I'm picking this up to knit a lot. I kind of ideally want to make some quick, I want to make this, make this quickly because I want to wear this and uh, it's it's what, it's almost February so I want to try and get this done in the next couple of weeks so hopefully I can get a little bit of wear in it before I have to pack it away for the summer or for the warmer months because I think this is a proper deep cold days sweater. So yeah I'm really enjoying it, it's really fun, um, it's growing quickly and it's an interesting way to use a yarn and yeah pulling from two plates has made my life much much easier. I thought I had loads of this, but I have these two plates and then I have, I've already knit two plates 
I have these two, and then I have three more. So I might have to order an extra plate. But my plan is to finish it all, finish the first sleeve, see how much weight the first sleeve takes, and then order based on that. So if I need some more. Um, and then this will be out of stash. And it's good because it's been in stash for about eight months now. So I'm glad that it's getting its moment in the spotlight and getting out of my stash. <laughs> So yeah, that is my, my last whip. Lots of cables on the needles. Lots of this pretty much exact sweater on the needles. Yeah, all the whips. Uh, let's move on to podcast recommendations. So I haven't done podcast, recommenda podcast recommendations in a while. Um, and then one of the people who um, I was gonna recommend, like who's on my list of recommendations, put up a new episode and I thought, this is a good time to recommend them. Um, so I had three recommendations. I was going to do like a wrap up of Scottish podcasters, but there are so many I'm not keeping up. And there are a couple of new ones that I want to check out, so I might come back to that. But two of them are on this list anyway. So the first one to recommend is Ancestral Crafts. Her name is Alex um, and she is also based in Leith. She must be like within 10 minutes walking from me. Um, I think she's really close. She has graduated in I don't know if it's gardening, I don't know if her degree is gardening, it can't be, it must be something like, it's definitely something more technical than that. But she does a lot of really interesting stuff about natural dyeing, natural fibres, she works out, outside for most of the day so a lot of her knits are about keeping warm. It was just a really, just some basket weaving, she kind of was like the, the Scottish Marina Skewer, if anyone's into Marina Skewer's podcast, I also love that one. Um, but yeah, so she has just released a second episode. I've not watched it yet, um, but I watched her first one. I really enjoyed it. I think um, Amy Palco recommended her on her last podcast too. So I'll add her below. Yeah, just really wholesome, lovely. She's very sweet. And yeah, a really different take. It's like not very natural take on it, but also like she's got a degree in this. So it's a real like educated insight into a lot of more like natural parts of the fiber industry. Yeah. Um, the second one, actually, the second person recommended the first person to me. So the second one is Ode, um, who is Bobbles and Berries. And she's also based in Edinburgh, but I think she's French. I'm really worried she's not French, but she's been here for quite a long time. Um, so she's very much like Edinburgh, Edinburgh based. Ode makes amazing project bags. I think that was where, like, that's where she got her, her first notat, not Notoriety, am I saying that wrong? That's where she f first became known for. She makes hand embroidered project bags. So um, I think she opens a pre-order usually like once a month and you can order a bag and she puts together some designs and then she stitch hand stitches them into the project bags and then she sews up the project bags. It's so much work. I had it in my, like she had an update, update it'd be two weeks ago on a, on a Friday at 5 p.m. and I was like, oh, I, sh I forgot about it. But I was like, oh, I should do that. And then at like 5.05 she posted on Instagram being like, oh my god, all the spots are filled. And I was like, what? <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, but yeah, she's really, really great. I've not caught up with her yet. She's in Edinburgh, so hopefully I'll see her in real life at some point soon. But I really enjoy her podcast. She made, I think, a no frill sweater out of like a golden colour. <coughs> Those croutons again. I need to stop a snacking <laughs> between takes. Or snack on something that's not gonna like add crumbs to my throat. <laughs> um, yeah, what was I saying? She made a no frill sweater in this like golden colour of Jameson and Smith or I don't know, one of the two Shetland brokers. I don't know if it was Jameson's or Jameson's and Smith's. But it was a cone of this like golden colour yarn. It was beautiful and that sweater is, it's stuck in my brain. Like I'm still really thinking about it. So her podcast is really great. And the third podcast is not Scottish, although I think she might have some Scottish heritage because she celebrated Browns Night this week, I know that for sure. That is Naomi, who is NJ Knits. Naomi came to one of our knit nights, our virtual knit nights, and there were a group of us that were that stayed on until like 1am, and they're definitely the people that like I have a lot of communication with on Instagram now, like we talk quite a lot, and um, Naomi is one of them. She uh, travels a lot for work, so sometimes her podcasts are filmed on her canal boat in London, and sometimes they're filmed in... I don't know where, she's in Canada right now, and I can't remember where in Canada. Um, over Christmas she was in the States for a little bit. She lived in Prague last year, like she's all over the place. She is so funny. 
um, she's hilarious. Like I just laugh out loud watching her podcast because she's so funny. Um, she has some really cool, like she's currently knitting the Welcome to the Jungle sweater which is designed by Popknit and it's an all over colour work, I think fingering weight sweater. And every row takes her an hour, which is so much commitment. And she's also knitting from Stash this year. She's doing a much better job than I am. I'm only doing it for another month and even then I've already not done it yet. But yeah, um, somebody asked about if we have many international viewers at Knit Night and I thought I'd tag on to that last one. Naomi is very international, she travels everywhere. But yeah, we have people that come to Knit Night from everywhere. Like it's been really international. I think the last group, the last time I was in, the group I was in, there were like two of us from the UK and everyone else is international. So like people from the States, people from South Africa, people from Australia, people from Europe. It's been really cool. We don't have a net, we don't have a deadline yet for the next one. Deadline. We don't have a date set for the next one. Um, it's a virtual knit night. We've run it three times now. It's myself, Caroline and Caroline's Knits, and Anastasia from Free Your Sheep. Um, Anastasia's moving house right now, so I think she has bigger priorities than our knit night. Um, but I might try over the weekend to drop them a message and see if we can book something for February because it's um, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, those are my podcast recommendations. Uh, which is exciting. So next up, a couple of Q and A questions and then a tiny little bit of admin and then a little life update I guess almost done so again I have three questions so the context is uh, I am trying <laughs> I'm trying to not buy any new yarn until February because I realized when we moved house I had quite a lot of yarn quite a lot of sweater quantities and I was buying things quite in, uh, impulsively and they were stacking up and then I was buying more things and I wasn't getting through them Currently everything on my needles is a stash and I've, I'm excited for a lot of stash knitting to, still to come. But I have bought a little bit of yarn. Um, I bought some yarn to... Where is it here? I can't find it, it's here. So um, I can show it quickly. It's like a future cast on I guess. So this is the yarn I had in stash. It is Woolly Knit Harvest. It is just like, it's amazing. Um, and I really wanted to knit this up, so I bought some more here to go with it because I'm going to make the sweater number 18 by my favourite things knitwear. I swatched for it yesterday, I can, my swatch is like right there. <laughs> so I'll talk about this more next time, but I did buy some yarn. However, um, I also, I am, um, I'll come to the personal stuff, but I'm going to a yarn festival soon before my deadline ends of not buying yarn. So yeah, it's not going to, it's not going to happen, but it has been good because I've, there have been a couple of impulse things that I thought I'd just order it and I've not done it and the ideas are sitting in my brain a little bit more. I really want to knit a bouclé sweater. <laughs> so like these things, instead of me just ordering them impulsively, are sitting there and then at the end of February I will do a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of an examination of stash, where's it gotten to and what do I plan to knit with. Um, there's definitely some stuff in stash I wouldn't want to buy some more mohair for. So. Anyway, that's an update on that, which no one I think is that fussed about, but I thought I'd give an explanation because usually after I've done finished objects and then works in progress, I talk about acquisitions and the yarn I've purchased, but what I'm trying to do for the next couple of weeks is replace this instead of the Q&A section um, because, uh, yeah, because it's like some answering some questions people had. And so I put a, a box up on Instagram for some questions and asked for people to, if they had any questions and I'm slowly but surely working through those. So I have three questions and the first one is why did I switch to knitting continental? Firstly, I knit combination style. It's continental uh, but I, I uh, knit, I wrap my yarn for my knits and my pearls different ways um, and I did this because I learned to knit continental on YouTube and learned wrong. Well it's not actually wrong, there's nothing wrong with com combination knitting but it's taken me a couple months to work out the pitfalls of continental knit uh, combination knitting, sorry. Um, and for most of the time it's absolutely fine, but there are some times it has to be more aware that I'm doing it. So yeah, I switched to Continental but I I did it with YouTube and I made some mistakes. Or I wish if I could go back now, I wish I'd taught myself to tighten it like Norwegian pearls or regular pearls because now my hands are stuck knitting that way. <laughs> the reason I taught myself to knit Continental is because I wanted to knit faster and I thought Continental did that. It was... Um, pretty much bang on two years ago. So I mentioned last time that I started knitting about two years ago. Um, I remember 
after, so I got a book on sock knitting for Christmas and I cast on a pair of socks and I was knitting them English style and I went to Hobbycraft and I bought these two little caked up ombre sock yarns which I have no idea where they are now, they didn't get made into socks anyway <laughs> and I remember on the train, it was like a four hour, four and a half hour train from Edinburgh to London on that train back it was like a completely empty train and I taught myself to knit continental on that train journey it was weird, it stuck in my brain so clearly because I remember exactly where I was sitting, like I was sitting at a table, I know where I was facing, it was dark I remember all these things and I just had YouTube videos on and I remember it being about like, with picking, so with Continental you go through I remember it being about like opening the door and pulling the stitch through, I just remember that so yeah, I switched because I thought it was faster I know there are a lot of people who out there who knit English style fast um, and their English style is faster than the Continental um, I really enjoy Continental knitting like, my continental knits are just really fast and I really enjoy it and it's very minimal movement so I think it um with knitting a lot like some people flick but a lot of people like have to really pull the yarn around whereas this combination it's just a pick 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 so for the amount of knitting I do I think it's probably a good thing that I knit continental because it's probably a bit better on my joints so yeah that's why I knit to switch to continental question two how many hours a day do I knit this is a, a quick confrontational question because I have to really think about it. So I think I knit about four hours a day. Which is probably, I think that's about average. Some days are much less and some days are definitely more. So I um, work from home and I always have a project next to me at the de at my desk if I'm in meetings. So it'll be something plain in the round, I don't have to look at it. Um, I find it keeps me really focused. At first, when I did it, I just really wanted to be knitting. And I didn't want to be, like, I was like, I just want to knit all the time. So that's why I started it. But I find now that it really helps me focus. I stay a lot more, um, I can't go doing anything on my hands. So I can't go, like, scrolling to other websites or, like, checking my phone or, like, tuning out. So I stay focused on what's happening. And, yeah, because I'm knitting, my brain is, like, I don't know, the angsty bits or, like, the bits that are energetic or really settled down. And so I find I have a lot more focus on meetings. Um, so I really, really enjoy knitting through meetings and I probably do that like some days I have, like yesterday I had meetings all day from 10 to 4 so I didn't knit in all of them but I probably did like a good two hours of knitting at work and then yeah, I think there are a couple of days a week where I'll do a good two hours through meetings I usually knit for an hour in the morning or like 30 minutes in the morning usually with my coffee before I, as I'm waking up and then after work I like to like decompress. I find it really tricky when you work from home. I work from our like our kitchen and I really like the space that I work in. We have an office and I'm in the process of setting myself up there but I do really like where I work in our living room or in our kitchen and it's next to the living room but I find that because I live and work in the same space I like to go to decompress and so usually my, off my, my office is right over there so I get up and I come and I sit on this chair and I bring my knitting and I have maybe like a hot drink or uh, whatever and I watch maybe like an hour of TV and I find that really like that's my real decompression time um, and then if we watch any TV in the evening or if I go to I don't know if we watch any TV or if we go to the movies or if I'm on any public transport that usually makes up the rest of the time some days work's too busy I don't knit we have plans in the evening I don't knit I don't think there are any days where I never knit like I think it's been a while since I've not done any knitting in a day um, and some days are way more like Monday we had knit night so I think that was like three hours of knitting and my partner was on D was playing DD with some of his friends so on Monday like I think I had we had planning at work which is like an hour and a half so there was like an hour and a half of knitting and a half hour in the morning and then three hours of knit night in the evening and then I came home and did maybe an hour by myself so it's like six hours of knitting so yeah sometimes it's more than others but that's why I really enjoy having a really easy project that I don't need to focus on for things like cinema meetings etc and then I have a core complex one which I find really helps to like decompress like that's what I like to get stuck into in that hour after work and then the weekends like the weekends I always knit for a couple hours in the morning because I just like get out have a coffee unless we're going out somewhere I love that so yeah probably four hours a day is that a lot I'm, I'm curious if, if you think it's a lot tell me below or if you think you do way more tell me below because I don't know it was quite confrontational to work it all out I think so the final question from the q &A was about um, picking, it was more technical, and it was about how do I go about picking yarn that's not the recommended yarn. 
for a pattern. Um, I do this a lot. I very, very rarely use a recommended yarn, mostly because I find it's really quite expensive. And I ultimately try to spend less money on my knits because I knit a lot. Um, and I like to be more budget friendly. So um, I put in a couple of notes. So I think I'm starting, like in the beginning, I wasn't quite sure how to go about doing it. Um, I've definitely become a lot more comfortable with um, playing around, pairing yarns together. And I think I've started to have some quite clear, like quite a clear picture in my head of gauge and how gauge works. I know, like I am pretty confident that for me, like a 21 stitch gauge is a DK weight yarn or it's a fingering and a mohair held together on a four mil needle. And so like in my brain, I know that like, if it's a 21 stitch gauge or like a little bit over, a little bit under, I'm like, okay, well I have two options. I can knit two strands together or I can hit knit a fingering and I'm aware and I'm just like sold on that one. I think I'm slightly less sure with higher gauges, but I'm definitely getting better at experimenting. Couple of, so that's like the familiar gauge. Secondly is the type of yarn it uses. So um, a lot of patterns call for blown yarn and um, I think it's just important to think about those things because for example, um, Sadness Garn Cause or Kit Couture also have a blown yarn or Snefnug are all really lovely blown yarns. Drops Air is also a blown yarn. And so I wouldn't rec like I wouldn't substitute in uh they're they're considered iron weight, those blown yarns, but they're very, very light. So they're 150 meters per 50 grams. Whereas something like the Cascade 220 is something like pretty much for 50 grams, it's 50 meters. No, it's 100 meters for 50 grams. And so it's a lot heavier, it's a lot denser fabric, and so I do think about the type of yarn I'm substituting in. So if it's a blown yarn, if it's a very light yarn, um, if I'm substituting alpaca, then alpaca is very soft and drapey, whereas a wool will be less so. And so yeah, I think um, gauge is the first thing. The second thing is like the makeup or like the breakdown of the, f of the um, fibres, that's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, I would substitute quite happily 100% alpaca with 100% alpaca or like 60-40. But I'd be, if I was going to substitute a wholly alpaca yarn in for a wool, I'd think, well, why? Like, will this work for the pattern? Or if it's something that's really structured, I probably want, like, in my, I quite like having, like, toothier yarns or, like, more rustic yarns for things with more structure. Um, with colour work, like, I want something that will fill the gaps with colour work. So, yeah, those are just, like, things that I started to, I've picked up with trying more and more yarns. And I'm doing a lot of swatching right now for upcoming projects and I have been amazed at the results I've had. Um, where I've held two strands together, where I've held one strand with mohair, where I've held one strand single, where I've used different needle sizes and I think that's been, that's been really interesting. I've enjoyed that a lot. The very last one is meterage. And so this has helped me where yarn categories haven't and that is checking the meterage of your yarn versus the meterage of the recommended yarn. I think this helps a lot with working out the weight of something, especially like UK to US, because I consider like in my head, a worsted weight and an iron weight were very similar. I've actually learned is a lot of the time a worsted weight yarn or a worsted weight pattern, I could knit up in a DK, like a thicker DK. Um, so I have some yarn, I'll put it back in the other room. I have some yarn, um, that I got in my yarn swap, so some piece fleece and some stone, something stone DK, I can't remember what it is, it's by Bare Naked Wools, so stone soup DK, um, and they're both, yeah, so there's a piece fleece DK and a stone soup DK, and I wanted to knit the Vargo Pullover by Sari Nordland, um, and I had to, what I basically did was worked out what like the meters per hundred grams were for the recommended yarn versus mine and I found that mine will be fine like it's gonna be okay I need to swatch for it still but it gave me the confidence to think well I can definitely sub this yarn in because the meterage of like they're both rustic yarns I think the Vargo pullover is done in I think for all of merino this is done in peace fleece um both I think 100% wool and the meterage for 100 grams to 100 grams was really, really close, like only off by like 10 or 15 meters. And so that gave me the confidence to say, this yarn will probably work for this pattern, 
and I can swatch it. But ultimately, swatching. I know some people don't like swatching. I quite like swatching. I do like little swatches. I don't do big swatches. They're never like this size, like they're <laughs> like 20 rows. Um, but yeah, that gives me a lot more confidence going into a pattern, um, especially when I sub out yarns, which I do all the time. Um, Sari Nordland has released her Foxberry pullover today and I will be purchasing it within 10 minutes of this recording finishing probably. I really like that pattern and she knit it in a strand of mohair and a strand of DK. Sorry, a strand of mohair and a strand of fingering weight and I'm going to swatch for it in DK because the gauge is 20 stitches per 10 centimetres, which I know I can get. And I have the DK weight yarn that I want to use for it. So yeah, that's my plan. So yeah, that's my third question. Um, I'm no expert on this. I've not had it go badly yet. <laughs> but I think, yeah, gauge, like getting familiar with different gauges of different yarns you like to use, the type of yarn, the composition, and the meterage per 50 grams, per 100 grams, are the things I usually go through to check if it will suit. And those are my cute questions this time. Um, I still have a bank of questions, but if there is anything burning that you'd like to know about me, about knitting, I'm not a particularly experienced knitter, but um, I'm a very enthusiastic one. So if you have any questions, uh, you can put them below or send me on Instagram. And if not, I will keep working through my bank of questions for another couple of episodes. Okay, just a few more bits to go. And then we're almost done. So a few little bits uh, to wrap up. The knit along that I'm running with Lisa from And So On is almost at an end. It is the knitting first cal and the whole concept was to knit something for the first time. So either knit, um, if you're not a knitter, try knitting. Um, if you are, maybe you're a garment knitter, maybe try knitting socks or try knitting something else. Or if you have knit all the things, try new techniques. So try brioche or try intarsia or try color work. Um, and it's been running for a while, like two and a half months, and it closes on Monday. So the 31st is the last day to enter, and uh, we'll be drawing some prizes. So I have two prizes to draw, and Lisa has two prizes to draw, and we'll be, um, yeah, we'll be submitting them for, uh, that'll be like the, the prizes for people who, who submit. You can enter by putting something on Instagram and using the hashtag, and uh, we'll be drawing from the finished objects thread, so hashtag knitting first cal fo um, I think there are like a hundred things in there right now which is crazy um, some people have knit like whole sweaters people have started socks for the first time um, some people have just knit for the first time it's just been really it's been really cool to see um, I followed the hashtag and I thought that meant I saw everything in the hashtag but I only saw a few things and then I went into the hashtag and looked through it and I was like whoa there's so much in here so the prizes I'll be drawing I'll announce them I'll draw them on Monday or sorry Tuesday um, but I'll run through them and the start of the next podcast um, so you know if you want and I'll post on Instagram on Tuesday already. Um, I have two prizes, there's a couple, copy of Jessica McDonald's ebook um, which I've forgotten the name of right now, it's called something to do with Woodland something. It is a collection of um, children's patterns, Woodland Ramble? I'm making this up. Um, it's a collection of a beautiful like nature inspired children's patterns. I think there are a couple of sweaters, a couple of accessories and the accessories are children and adult um, and she yeah very generously donated it so that'll be one prize and the other prize is a skein of yarn and some stitch markers. Oh the stitch markers are here. Um, so some little nitty stitch markers and a skein of yarn from um, Henny Penny Makes but this was the Perth Festival of Yarn colorway and um, Perth Festival of Yarns happening in September. I'm very excited to go. We're talking about it at knit night actually. Um, I was hearing all sorts of stories from um, Miss Amy Palco about drinking lots of tequila um, and spending lots of money on yarn. So I am very excited for September when um, that rolls around. But in the meantime, if you want to get some Perth Festival fix, this is the colorway Tay Street, which is a the name of a street in Perth, and it's the exclusive Perth Festival of Yarn colorway. I know in the last episode they were expect they were um, they had the vendor applications open. I'm not sure they're still open, but um, if you would like to be a vendor, I guess you can still check out the website. So yeah, I will draw the prizes for that on Tuesday, and I'll show them on Instagram on Tuesday, and then I'll show them in the next podcast. But if you have anything that you've not posted yet, or you finished something, you think, oh, that enters the prize. Feel free to, I mean, 100, 100 posts so far, and there are four prizes. I've got two, and um, Lisa's got two. So you've got like a one in 25, 
one in 25 chance of winning something, which I think is pretty high. That's the first thing. The second thing is that next episode, I'm going to try and do a premiere, which is where like I film it in advance, but then it goes live and there's like a live chat box so like we can chat. I'm going to have a load of swatches and I really want some help deciding some patterns. And it's like the 10th episode, so I thought it'd be fun to do something different and something a bit nice. Um, so yeah, I think that will be on a Thursday evening, UK time, like probably 7 pm. So maybe, yeah, 7 pm should work. Um, so yeah, that, that's coming. Um, if you're interested, you don't have to watch live, you can watch whatever you fancy. Um, or just don't watch if you don't want to. But I just thought I'd give a heads up in advance that that's coming. Also because something very exciting is happening. My first uh, like collaboration with a brand, it's a brand I'm really excited to work with and it's all gonna get launched next episode. Um, a very large box arrived at my house yesterday with the prizes for the knit along and I'm very excited for it. So that's happening next episode. Um, and between now and then I'll just torment myself by swatching for everything. Um, and the very last thing is that I'm going to Unravel Festival. So um, Unravel is a yarn festival held in Farnham and Farnham Maltings. It's about an hour south of London. I went last year, it's the only yarn festival I've ever been to. I went last year as a very new yarn knitter and I felt very overwhelmed and it was smaller than normal and it's all just a bit like overwhelming. I really enjoyed it picked up a couple of skeins of yarn but yeah I, I didn't really feel like super comfortable I was like what is this <laughs> panic a little bit this time it feels like a bit of a homecoming going back um my boyfriend grew up in Farnham where um Unravel was being held as his parents live there um and so we are going down to stay with his parents for like 10 days um <laughs> we're going down well we had to we were planning to go down in February we have tickets for Bridgerton Secret Cinema which is like an immersive cinema experience for the Bridgerton series uh, in like the end of February and then Unravel's like the early February so we're staying there for 10 days so that we can fit both I mean so that I can fit both Unravel and the secret cinema in um, but it'll be really nice to see his family we've not seen them since we've moved up and they're moving house back to New Zealand soon so we're going to help out with some of the packing and getting the house organised um, and yeah I'll be at Unravel so I'm going to go on the Saturday I think I'm arrival time is for 12 o'clock um, I have committed that I will be buying a sweater quantity of hand dyed yarn. I think I want to make a fingering weight sweater this summer um, and I thought why not do a hand dyed yarn as a bit of a treat for myself um, for some knitting successes and running the podcast and all that going really well. I thought it would be a really nice thing to do. So um, if I don't find anything I might not get it but uh, yeah I'm thinking of four skeins of fingering weight hand dyed yarn it will definitely definitely be something like tonal because I'm not big on like crazy sparkly unicorn colours and I think it might be quite limited because I want it obviously to be obviously well I would like for me for it to be non superwash and so I was having a look at some of the, the vendors there might not be anything for me there. So we'll see, there are also people like, I think Rao Work is there and Garth and Orr, so maybe I get like something more, more rustic is not hand dyed. We will see. Um, I have one more episode before I go, so it'll be a few more episodes before I share that. I do know that um, Laura of Penrose Knits and Jonathan from Jonathan Days are both gonna be there. Um, it would just be really nice to see some people, so if you're going to unravel, let me know. <laughs> um, I am going, last year my boyfriend came with me and this year he's not coming. He was very happy to, but he's like, I'll just buy yarn and I don't need any more yarn. So I've got a friend, um, she's doing a class, so I think we'll try and arrive together and do a wandering around. But if you're there, you want to get some coffee and talk about knitting and do some knitting, um, yeah, let me know, because it'd be really nice to hang out with some knitters, especially ones from down south, since I've not been for a while. So that is on Friday, no, Saturday the 11th, I think, or Saturday the 12th of February from 12 o'clock I will be at Unravel Festival uh, buying some yarn and talking to people and probably just geeking out a little bit and getting a bit over overexcited about everything. I think that's everything. Life-wise is good, work is really busy, just real busy right now but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, my new role is really exciting and it's definitely challenging me a lot but I'm enjoying that a lot. We're going to my parents this weekend. Uh, my little, two of my little sisters are twins and they turned 17 today. God help the world. Um, they got their driving licenses so they can start learning to drive which is crazy. So we're going out there for like a really nice family weekend so I'm really excited for that. Um, we're just going to have some nice food and chill out and yeah that's about it. 
I will be back in a couple of weeks time with my, my big announcement. It's not really, I mean, an announcement when you knit along and loads and loads of swatches because I have like six projects I might cast on for this and so I'm swatching for all of them in the hope that that will make me excited about some of them. Well, narrow down my excitement to some of them and then hopefully get some in input from you guys about which ones I should make. So thank you for joining me, it's been really lovely as always and I'm off to make some lunch so I can stop stacking on croutons and actually just eat lunch like a normal person <laughs> and edit this video and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and yeah, I'll catch up with you soon. Bye!